44406 Computer Graphics. This is the Unit 3 Lecture Part 1. During this lecture we're going to cover some of the basic concepts of color and we're going to talk a little bit about how we create color with computer graphics. We're going to talk a little bit about what color means as a, as a, as a form of communication. And we're going to continue this, this conversation about color as a method of communication that conveys meaning or emotion in the second lecture as well. So let's kind of jig into the topic and just start off by defining color as essentially fundamental to graphics. So um, color when it became available in computing was, was a significant um, breakthrough because color gave us an opportunity to represent things in a more realistic way. So um, color is very important to use. Um, we all know that color is used in computer systems. In fact, the computer you're looking at right now represents color and it uses color. So in order to use color, we need to understand a little bit about it. We need to know how to work with it. We need to know what it means and we need to know where and how to use it from the perspective of using it as a way of communicating information, conveying certain kinds of emotions. So we all know that different colors mean different things to different people. Uh, a great example of that is the color green typically is fresh or living things or perhaps represents spring. Um, the color red is oftentimes something that conveys the feeling of angry or anger. Perhaps the color gray would represent, uh, you know, a feeling where you're feeling um, depressed or blue or perhaps um, even if you're, you're kind of feeling or thinking about death. So we know that different colors mean different things to different people and uh, we need to keep that in mind. Um, now the other th next thing we really wanted to kind of represent and talk about a little bit is how we perceive color. So, you know, our visual system is all based upon the use of our eyes right? Light comes into our eyes, we perceive that light, and we perceive it using two different kinds of cells. And those cells are referred to as rod cells and cone cells. So the rod cells kind of sense the luminance or the brightness of the light that's coming to us. Now let's kind of go back and and just cover the, the point that we've made in a previous lecture, which is the fact that what we see when we see an image is actually light that's reflected off from that image and what we see as color is certain wavelengths of light that happen to be reflected so there might be something in that surface something in the what we call color that reflects one kind of light but doesn't reflect other wavelengths I should say of light meaning we might perceive it as having a specific color because it's only reflecting a particular wavelength of light so rods um, and the rod cells in our in our visual system sense illuminance or brightness. How bright is something? You look at the sun, it's very bright. When I'm looking in a dim room, it's a, it's a totally different situation. And the other cells are cones. And the cone cells actually sense chroma or color. And you know, we can define that a little bit differently to say that light is, um, is a, a form of emitted energy and it travels in specific wavelengths and it's those wavelengths that we see and we perceive as colors. So we know there's an entire spectrum of light or a spectrum of wavelengths. Different wavelength means a different color and so the cones actually sense those wavelengths of of color and generally these cones are uh, sensitive to specific colors such as um, red, green, and blue. And so red, green, and blue, we tend to, in our visual system, we mix these colors together. Um, we are sensitive to those colors and so therefore the amount of light that we're receiving in each of those color bands we perceive as being different colors because essentially we mix them together. So computer graphics is all about trying to simulate these capabilities. We're going to try to produce images using green, red, and blue primary colors and essentially mixing those colors together to, to represent all of the different colors in the rainbow that we might be able to perceive. So um, the way that we do that is there's a couple of different methods of doing it and if we kind of go back to the old color TV days and, and quite frankly even relatively recently in when we had CRT based terminals and computer systems the way that those colors were generated is by specific phosphors that were embedded in the screen 
and essentially what would happen is the electron gun would go across these things and it would it would emit um, electron and the electron would cause that phosphor to glow and when it glowed it would glow in either a red green or blue color and the intensity at which it glowed would determine the amount of blue or the amount of green, the amount of red that was actually produced. Now we would put those phosphors very close to each other. In fact, we put three of them together, very, very close together, and those three would actually form a pixel on the TV. And so because I have three of them very, very close together, those three colors, red, green, blue, would tend to mix together. So what we would actually perceive is the mixing together of the color or the, the the light wavelength being emitted by those three phosphors and that's pretty much how it worked now we're doing some different things now in in the LCD technology etc but it kind of gives us a good understanding of of how graphics um, were able to generate different colors um, by illuminating these phosphors and those phosphors would would be appear to us to be a pixel. So I create a, a color on a pixel and that's how I actually produced the 2D graphics that appears on the television screen or the computer screen. So um, talk a little bit about the whole concept of the RGB color space and again you know what we've been talking about is the fact that when we mix red, green, blue as primary colors it allows us to get as we can kind of see and visualize in the cube all the different colors of the rainbow so we you know we can kind of put it into a cube format and represent having green and blue and red and how they kind of mix to e with each other now what really should be interesting here is um, in the RGB system the idea is is that when I put all of the colors in the rainbow together they're white in fact white represents all light all visible spectrum light that's reflected from the surface of an object um, the color black, which we see in this particular case, essentially is no light that's being reflected. So essentially black basically means I'm not reflecting light. Now we do know that in order to see it, it has to reflect some light, but essentially the idea is it's absorbing the vast majority of light. And generally what we see when we see black is actually more of a, a glare. Um, that's coming in where a light might be reflected um, at an angle from, from the surface of it. So just to kind of um, illustrate the difference between color and luminance, now we've talked about color being the chroma or the wavelength of the, the frequency, if you would, of the light waves that are reaching us. Luminance is the brightness of it. So um, the luminance is, is essentially the intensity of each of these basic colors that, that occur. And What's really interesting is, is that as, as human beings, this luminance is almost as important to us as the chroma. So the color itself is the luminance that helps convey a lot of information um, in the graphics. And in fact, if you look at an image such as this, what we see in this image is that um, I, I have, in this particular case, I have a, a cube, and in the cubes, outlined or defined for us by the chroma so the colors that are in the cube and we have some darker areas and some lighter areas and it helps us to distinguish this thing and the shape of it um, the other example which is the one here on the on the right what we see is we do not have any chroma in fact all we are basically representing here is the luminance information um, in the luminance some of the areas are going to be brighter more light being emitted from it and some of the areas are going to be darker with less light being emitted from it so you know the ones with less light being emitted they kind of look in more of a gray so they're not reflecting as much of the light and the ones that are more white are, are the ones where they're reflecting the majority of the light so we can see that a lot of the information of what to us defines this as being a cube or kind of an elongated one is the is the luminance actually and not just the color so uh, the point here is, is that luminance is is as important oftentimes in conveying information as the color itself so I want to talk just a little bit about the difference between what we're going to call emissive versus transmissive colors now let's look at the, the, the two models I have down below um, the one on the left is is kind of an emissive model and if you think about emissive meaning it's it's emitting color and the other one is is kind of a transmissive model which is the one on the right so the way I like to think about the transmissive one if as a kid you ever played with finger paints we all know what happens as, as kids we start with all the different colors we slap them up in the page we move our hands around with them and eventually what happens they all mix together and they turn 
brown or black and they're just totally disgusting and ugly. That's a transmissive color. So in a transmissive color, when I put all of the colors together, I essentially have black <laughs> because H, as I add additional colors, it reflects less and less light. In an emissive model, essentially it's the exact opposite of that, um, where I put all the colors together, it, I uh, fundamentally have white light. And of course we know, we kind of look at the prism over here, uh, if I put white light into a prism, we know that what's going to reflect out of that gra glass prism is all of the colors of the rainbow. That's how we know that um, white light or white is essentially the combination of all of the other colors. So emissive colors tend to come from our computer screen and this is us kind of emitting light through the phosphors, through the LCD capabilities, right? Whereas transmissive colors tend to come from inks. By the way, transmissive would be the mechanism that we're using when we're printing stuff. So our printers with our red, yellow, um, with our three color cartridges that you probably recognize um, in, in, the, uh, in the printer, the inkjet printers, if you have one of those, um, are transmissive, whereas um, the displays themselves tend to be emissive colors. <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's sometimes why, you know, what you see on the screen doesn't exactly appear to be the same when it prints out. And then the last topic we wanted to cover in this particular lecture, lecture is this concept of color depth. And depth is the number of bits required to store color. Now, we've talked a little bit about the whole idea. If we look at our computer screen, essentially what it is, it's kind of made up of lines. And in each of these lines, I have, you know, kind of rows, if you would, or we'll better term, we're going to call them as pixels. So if I have a, a screen that has 1024, by 768 as my resolution. What that means is I have 1,024 pixels in this line and there's actually 768 lines that go down. Now every single one of those pixels has to have some information about the color that it's going to represent and the color and the intensity that that particular um, pixel is going to output. And that information or the amount of information that I'm actually going to store with that is actually the color depth and the minimum um, on that is typically 8 bits so I'm going to have to have at least 8 bits. Now if I have 8 bits I know that I have basically only 256 colors you know 2 to the 8 is 256 so it limits what I can do and when I do that I tend to start seeing something that looks like this and we kind of see this whole color banding thing that's going on that's what happens with 8 bits of color. Um, many, many of our graphic systems now have become a little bit more modern, so it, it's very typical for us to have much higher depth, such as a 24-bit or even a 32-bit. Now, the, the difference is, is again, it's a lot more memory, right? It, it's a lot more information. So when I start having 24 bits, that means that for every single one of these pixels, I have to have 24 bits of data just to keep track of the color. And if I'm using 32, then that obviously means that I have 32 bits. So, you know, 32 bits is 4 bytes for every single one of these pixels. So that starts to be a lot, of, a lot of information from a memory perspective. In fact, when you start looking at the memory on video cards, one of the reasons why you want to have all that memory is because of the fact that it gives you a lot more color depth.